Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Don't Argue Podcast here. I hope you guys are well. Thanks again for being part of the show. Yes, this is a bit of a special one here. It means a lot to me. This is where we take a bit of a deep and a personal dive into our why I became a fan of Fremantle and I guess a fan of AFL, right? May as well chuck you guys some bonus content. So uh, without further ado, DJ, hit that intro. Well, yes, here it is, right? Um, for many of you guys, you're obviously looking at me as a content creator, you're sort of thinking, where did I come from, right? It's not every day you sort of see a, you know, a Kiwi, a, a uh, you know, Pacific Islander sort of talking about AFL. It's very, very rare that you do, though, in saying that we have in one way or another contributed to the game AFL. Obviously, it pales in comparison to other, uh, you know, ethnic groups. But in saying that, here I am, and uh, a Freo fan nonetheless, but still, an AFL fan as well. So uh, I guess we'll get straight into it. So yeah, look, my, my, my uh, sort of origins with AFL is quite funny. The only thing I sort of knew about AFL was that it was actually three letters in the alphabet. Uh, no joke at all. Um, I remember sort of one time back when I was younger in New Zealand, uh, there was a teacher from Victoria who actually came over and he actually introduced me to the game of um, AFL. He sort of like uh, had some chairs in which he used his goals sort of gave us a little rundown of the game, said it's about handballing and almost like a game of basketball, except you can run the ball, you can sort of kick it, you know, a bit of basketball, a bit of soccer, a little bit of rugby as he sort of touched on it, I guess, just to try and, uh, you know, get us Kiwi boys and girls there, you know, just a bit uh, bit excited. But I sort of remember playing the game and I was actually, uh, what's the word? I was actually quite intrigued by it. I didn't mind it. But I remember sort of kicking a goal or two as he caught it. I think I had one behind, but that was as far as it went. Now, in saying that, I do have family in Victoria and I have been exposed to the game, but little to, to no interest. Uh, let's just say no interest. So that's sort of like the origins there. Fast forward, and obviously, um, yeah, look, my first memories of, of our AFL in Australia, uh, in South Australia specifically, seeing the Crows uh, mascot, you know, on the cardboard cutouts and all that stuff. A few years ago actually going about 14 15 years ago and uh i think sort of looking at it and being like oh uh i didn't know south australia had a rugby team that that's quite literally you know how it went for me you know a, um, a rugby rugby league rugby union team that that was it you know and obviously we all know that that was afl so uh, yeah look I, I guess um for me one of what are my thoughts of afl watching it you know, and, and it's so sad because a lot of us do this, especially those who are ignorant. It's called ignorance. So when I first, you know, started watching the game AFL, and when I say watching, I mean loosely watching on highlights. You know what I mean? You'd hear the, the yarn about it during the, the school week there about who played who. You know, the teams like Richmond come to mind, obviously Port Adelaide, Crows. But I was just, I didn't care. Didn't care. And when I sort of saw the game, I wasn't a fan, you know. You know, all, all the terminologies that a lot of uh, ignorant folk use to... to Talk about AFL, that's what I used, and uh, I guess it's actually one of my deepest regrets, actually, is having such a closed and narrow-minded view on the game, you know, just because I didn't understand it, just because I didn't understand it, you know, and, and for me, I was like, oh, look at them, they can't catch, they such a fumbly game, you know, there's no skill, and I absolutely wasn't ignorant fool for saying that, you know, granted, I was young, but still, I wasn't open to the game at all, you know, and so that, that is my actual genuine view. Now, I understand that not everyone's going to be crossing over another code. I get it. You know, there's some staunch AFL fans who will always be AFL. There's some staunch NRL who will always be NRL. I get it. It is what it is. You know, that's the way it goes. But obviously, there are some who cross over. There's a minority, and I'm one of them, and that's just the way it goes. Anyway, anyway. So, yeah, fast forward to 2017, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm still a fan of my team, the New Zealand Warriors, um, but they've just been losing you know, a string of games during that time, and look, without trying to spoil it for you guys, not much has changed, really, fast forward to this year, but anyway, and I just get, you know, I'm just like, you know, I, I can't do this, I need another team to support, to, to, to not give me a headache, right, so uh, I uh, opened myself to AFL, and so what I did with that was I actually looked into the upcoming grand final, no, what I did was I actually followed the, um, what do you call it, the, the 2017 finals, right, I think I remember it was like, Bombers and Cats or West Coast. I'm, I'm not too sure who, who it was that was playing in the, in the in the finals there, the top eight finals. But I just remember sort of letting myself, 
how do I say this? I was, I was opening myself to the game, right? No longer was I going to look at the game and flick it over. No longer was I going to look to the look at the game and call it names. I was going to really prepare myself to, to dig the heels in, right? Grab the weights and start the lifting, uh, basically. So, uh, yeah, that's how it started, basically. And obviously, the next transition point for me after accepting that, that I was going to try and breathe in this game, what team should I support? And uh, it was actually quite a journey and experience. You know, we all have experiences in life. But I think from the sporting lens, particularly when you're pick, uh, picking a sporting team, it can be very interesting. It can be very uh, eye-opening. But it can also be very intimate. Um, and it's funny that I use that word, but depending on, on who you are as a, as a sports fan, it can be quite a deep experience. And for me, it was. Purely because I'm a loyalist. Right, so whoever I pick, I'm gonna stick with, regardless of this team literally drives me insane, or whether this team gives me reward after reward after reward, right? And I'll quickly touch on my NBA team as well. So I do follow the NBA and the NRL. I follow the Toronto Raptors. That's my basketball team. I'm a devout Toronto Raptors fan. I've been since I was young, and like I said with the Warriors, it's been the same thing. So this was different, you know. I was I was an adult now opening myself up to this world called AFL, you know, in 2017, I was about 23, 24 at the time. So the selection for me, that there was no real criteria selection apart from the fact well, apart from the fact that I didn't want to support a team that had already won a premiership, purely because I want to be part of that, um, that celebration, you know, I, I just want to be part of it, yeah? So for mine, I, I, because of that, there was already a few teams that were crossed off, right? You can already imagine it. However, in saying that, uh, I just just a quick little point. Um, before I before I did that research, I did not even think of supporting West Coast. By the way, it, I, I'm not even kidding you guys. I, West Coast didn't really come to mind. Not at all. Um, no, not at all. You know, I just I just for all you Freer fans there, that's 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 the honest truth. Free, uh, West Coast did not come close to mind um, for me before I knew about Premiership teams. And obviously, when I found out, obviously I crossed them off as well, as well as a lot of teams. Now, obviously, there was only a few teams remaining, right? The Giants, the Suns, and obviously Fremantle. But in saying that, I was actually really attracted to the Suns and the Gold, uh, and the Giants specifically because they were from Queensland, and New South Wales. You know, because of their, uh, you know, I don't know. I just, I just, I was just attracted to that, you know. And uh, I sort of turned my attention to, to Fremantle. Now, again, I'm not saying that the Premiership thing was a be all end all, but for me, it was just what I wanted, right? But for me, there was just something about Fremantle when I looked at them, right? And, and I'm saying this was even before I did the cross of the lists, by the way. And it's a bit confusing. It's a bit confusing. So basically what I did, okay, just quickly, just quickly, side note, I'll get there. I crossed the, uh, before I even crossed off the premiership winning teams, I looked at a whole heap of teams right in front of me. West Coast were not on the radar. But teams like obviously the Suns, the Giants were, I would admit that. And obviously a few Victorian teams, obviously, yeah, Collingwood, Cats you know, uh, Richmond, you know, uh, in terms of South Australia, no, I didn't look at any of the teams there, no, I didn't, in terms of, um, yeah, in terms of West, yeah, WA, it was Fremantle, it was Fremantle for mine, but they, they were sort of like the teams I was trying to navigate through, wasn't much teams at all, actually, anyway, I digress, but uh, yes, after doing all that stuff there, for me, Fremantle came, and, and that's when I sort of found out, oh, they didn't win a premiership, that's how it sort of, well, okay, whatever, it is what it is, they didn't win, okay, cool, cool, the interest sort of rose, but at the same time, it's about trying to see what does this club stand for. So, lo and behold, I'm uh, ready to make that transition, that that move, and I see someone called Nat Five. Okay, cool. What's about you know what is about this dude that uh that 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 draws a lot of fans to him, right? You don't have to support for your man to be a fan of Nat Five, and just the way he was, his uh his presentation, the way he was well spoken, his mannerisms, and I think the the way he was as as a person, very diligent, very executes things very carefully, you know, very articulate. And I thought for mine, that that resonates with me personally. Now, I'm not going to say I'm an articulate man as such, but there's just certain attributes that a captain had, he has, that just drew me to him. And obviously, again, uh, understand that Fremantle were in a bit of a transition period. Um, understand their season didn't go to plan that year. They didn't make the eight. So it looked like uh, Fremantle were in a bit of a rebuild, right? My understanding was... Two years prior to that, they got somewhere, but unfortunately couldn't get the job done. 
and obviously you know 2013 the grand final so on and so forth anyway so yeah, for me i just did a bit of research and that was it free mantle for mine purple free mantle you know sort of like the quote-unquote younger brother haven't won a premiership underdog sure why not so free mantle was the team i picked so um yeah i basically i uh, picked them and obviously there's the grand final there between uh tigers and uh crows and i watched that game and i i wouldn't say i felt well yeah okay to be honest with you guys that's when i first yeah that's when i fell in love with the game of footy actually it's quite literally when i saw the grand final in 2017. now i will admit whether you guys like it or not i do have a soft spot for the tigers it is what it is um i can't help it they were the team who won the grand final and on top of that as well i just i just like the way that they played their footy anyway 2018 rolls around and uh that's what happened that's exactly what happened i've followed free man from there i want to cut it short long story short it was a very how do i say this the, the one thing i had about following free man in, in 2018 is the fact that the eagles won that premiership like my first ever time being a full-time fan of the game eagles won would have sucked 2019 2020 obviously tigers 2021 melbourne so that is my experience so far as, as a free fan and obviously 2022 things are looking good over there in uh in uh free manual so that's where i'm at currently so yeah for mine i guess if i was to tell you guys in a nutshell how i became a fan i became a fan because i was open to accepting the game of footy i was i was, I was um i guess understanding that i was actually full of regrets in terms of how i viewed the game and at the same time as well when i looked for for a team to follow Fremantle stood out for me personally now in saying that the, the ride hasn't been comfortable it hasn't been I'll be honest with you guys there's been some moments there when I've left scratching my head thinking what on earth is going to happen what, what on earth is the team, team doing but in saying that I've also been through I guess much like myself being a fan coming into the quote-unquote rebuilding season I guess I've sort of been in parallel to what they've been doing right a new season obviously the likes of uh, Brayshaw right the likes of Chero, who's now gone out to Carlton, Banfield, you know what I mean? So I came in that transitioning period, right? And obviously the year after that, right? We had the likes of Sarongs, your Hayden Youngs, your Liam Henrys, Michael Fredericks, right? And then so on and so forth, right? Until obviously the last one, Amos, right? As well as Erasmus. So I've, I've been part of that wave where Fremantle have been pushing upward, right? In my own opinion. And I've actually, like I said, as much as the ride has been uncomfortable, it's also been such a good good process for me because every single step of the way it's always been free manual to me and i've always just loved uh, everything that the, that the club has been doing thus far anyway but yeah that's it like that's it for me that's it from my lens i've always worn free gear i don't wear any other afl gear i wear the singlets i wear the beanies the scarves i've been to you know um afl games i've been to some i've been to one in new zealand I've obviously been to uh, a few here in Australia, but um, nah, no, nothing to mind beats a, a Frio game, you know, where my heart's really in it, where my heart's really pounding. Um, for, for me personally, there's nothing like supporting Frio Man. Um, and even my experience as a, mem as a member, um, I still remember that time when Longmuir was waved to me in Adelaide, in Adelaide City, making me feel like I was actually someone, like I was actually part of the team. I love this team with everything I have, you know, quite literally. Um, I'll never let go of Fremantle, be all end all. No, nah, that's it. It's Fremantle for me until the day I cannot be Fremantle anymore. Which is when I'm buried six feet underground. End of story, right? This club means so much to me and I love how they do their Anzac celebrations. Obviously Anzac um, is a very historic and very monumental, very sensible and it means a lot to us historically. But I really appreciate how they have the Australian as well as the Kiwi flag in there. You know, for me being a, being a proud Kiwi, I love the fact that this club that I love and give my time and and uh, investment and invest in financially actually understand and acknowledge the country i'm from I, I can't ask for much after that and obviously in saying i just i just love this team that there's a future that's going there and i'm part of it and you know what and even if nothing happens in this amazing run so be it free man all tomorrow free man all now tomorrow and forever right that's the way it is anyway guys that's my thoughts there on the team everyone the staff to the players to the fans to you guys commenting you know it's, it's all been such a a collective awesome experience for someone like myself and uh i consider i consider myself blessed being a Fremantle fan don't get me wrong i've sworn a few times on the telly don't you worry and i absolutely 
I seriously dislike West Coast Eagles. But anyway, I, uh, I digress. Uh, my experience being a fan has been, um, I loved it. I love every second of it. And I do hope to make a trip to WA sometime this year to, to watch Fremantle play, whether that be one of the round games or, hey, you know, fingers crossed, one of the finals or even down the beautiful MCG. We'll see what happens. We'll see what uh, September brings. But in saying that, that has been me for now. Anyway, take it easy. See you guys next time. Well, uh, when, when did you become a Fremantle fan? Like I said, for me, it was about when I was 24 years old. In 2017, during the uh, AFL Finals, when I thought to myself, yep, I'm a Dockers fan. 2019, remember, since then, looking forward to it. Looking forward to the future. Anyway, that's me for now. Take it easy. Thank you again for watching. Appreciate it. Fremantle, eh? Love this club. Don't argue.